If you're in slow tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy and a plank. Welcome to the very first episode of Drawing a Blank, an art-focused video series where I draw something and discuss my process as well as give art advice and talk about the things I draw. For the first episode, I'm going to be drawing Simi. Since she's my online avatar, or persona, I figured she would make a good first subject matter. Plus, I've gotten a lot of questions over the years about my Sona, and this seemed like a good way to answer some of those questions. Before I get to that, though, I'm going to break down how I go about drawing cats, since this is also something I get asked quite a bit. For starters, I've drawn cats for literal years. They've been my favorite drawing muse since I got into Warriors in seventh grade. And yes, I've been in cat hell for a long time. Before Warriors, my favorite thing to draw were dogs. Shocking, I know. But my main point is that it's taken me a long time to get to where I am, and if you're just starting out, you shouldn't try to overanalyze your skills or lack of them to be more precise. Just keep trying new things and practice a lot. Look at artists you admire for inspiration, but be sure to mainly focus on studying real life and draw from there. So as you can see, I'm pretty traditionalist with my drawing philosophy. I start with a basic circle for the head shape, and for any animal with a muzzle, I add another circle to represent that. I also use your basic crosshair to define the center of the face. More shapes gradually get added to that model, like circles to indicate where the eyes and ears will go, and some harsher shapes on the side of Simi's head to define her face shape. Taking the time to give yourself a good skeleton of the character will help you tremendously in the long run, and try not to forget that flipping your canvas gives you a fresh perspective on how you're doing. I know that for me personally, drawing a character can be tough if I don't have any personality showing. So after turning a basic semi head around in space for a bit, I like to switch to some more expressive warm-up sketches. These are much looser and, quite frankly, a little off-model, but the focus is the expression. If I wanted these to be finished drawings, I'd go back and fix her up. With these warm-up drawings done, I'm now going to draw Simi again in an illustrated piece. I've got some nice references to give me inspiration while I draw, and now I'll talk a bit about where Simi came from. I made Simi in 2016 as an avatar for myself when I became involved in the Multi-Animator Projects, or MAP, community. Most of the big names in the community had a fursona of some kind, and many would draw them hanging out with other members of the community, doing silly antics, or depict their sona looking exhausted and near insane after finishing an animation. We've all been there. The name Simi is actually short for Sumatra, which was my username on most internet spaces before I went to college. You know, back in that time when it was actually considered really scary to share your real name on the internet. It's still actually my name on DeviantArt, I just don't have the heart to change it after all of these years. I've been known as Sumatra over there for over 10 years now, so even though I go by my real name on most places now, I didn't feel comfortable calling my avatar Tenille. Even now just saying that kind of sounds weird. Plus, it gives the name I created in 2008 a place to be remembered, because I guess I'm just a little sentimental like that. Many people have asked me how I came up with Simi's design, and the simple answer would be that Simi was really easy for me to design because she's just a lot of elements that represent myself. That sounds obvious when creating a fursona, but I think that if you actually tried to make one yourself, you'd realize how difficult it can be. I've always really loved earth tones, and they go well with my physical appearance and pretty down-to-earth nature, so I went with a calico in those colors. The brown freckle on her muzzle is pretty similar to a freckle I have in real life, and while I actually have dark brown eyes, I gave Simi a lighter yellow-amber color to make her more cat-like and natural-looking. Of course, whenever I draw poses for Simi Speaks or Animation Pilgrimage, I also base Simi's facial expressions off of my own so she feels more authentic to me. Apart from that, the rest of her design just sort of fell into place for me. I did my best to think of how my body proportions would translate to a cat body, and for some reason I really tapered her tail quite a bit. I'm not exactly sure what my reasoning for this was at the time, but it's actually one of my favorite parts about Simi's design. Even if I've received a few opinionated comments on YouTube about how it looks like Simi has an otter tail. I think it's cute. Others have also asked me what Simi's warrior name would be if she lived in the Warrior Cats universe. 
I like to think that Simmy would be a, preferably Win Clan, medicine cat named Mudfreckle. If I grew up as a warrior cat, I think learning medicine would be similar to my passion for art. And I'm really not much of a hunter or a fighter. Mudfreckle would probably be a huge plant nerd and gush about herbs to all the other medicine cats or the unfortunate passing clanmate whenever she got the chance. Drawing a cartoon version of yourself can be tricky. There's so many elements that make up who we are as people, so narrowing down those traits into a cohesive design can be really hard, especially if you're not even quite sure of who you are as a person yet. You might even think that you know yourself pretty well and then grow and change into someone completely different. But that's okay. Just like people change, how you see yourself can change too. So never be ashamed to change that avatar or persona to something that fits you better. It is super satisfying to create a simplified caricature of someone that has appeal and yet still holds that spark that makes everyone unique. At first I just saw Simi as a means to represent myself while drawing, but over the years she's grown to be quite special to me and something that can always make me smile when I'm having a rough day. I even keep a folder of fan art I've received over the years of her on my desktop, and just looking through these actually gives me so much inspiration. Thank you everyone who's ever drawn her, it just really makes my day. And that's all for our first episode of Drawing a Blank. I hoped you liked it, and if so, please share with your friends and do all of that YouTube stuff. It really does mean a lot, and it makes a difference. If you're one of my patrons, be sure to go to my Patreon page and vote on who I draw next. It's a three-way between some Warriors Calico ladies, Tawny Pelt, Maple Shade, and Spotted Leaf. Link for the poll is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back next week with our winner.